This project is going to be to create a VSC detector developer's kit to give it a fancy name for an easy project. VSCs are volatile organic compounds. I'll include some links to learn more about them, but long story short, they're nasty things that you don't want to be breathing too much of typically. Many of them are linked to long-term health effects, you know, fun stuff like cancer. There's actually an Occupational Safety and Health or Hazard Administration standard for how much of formaldehyde, which is a VOC, there can be in the air. A lot of it's kind of new, so it's not like, ooh, these are a horrible thing and everyone knows not to be around them. It's kind of a developing thing. So what we're going to build is a developer's kit, meaning non-enclosed <laughs> non or necessarily fully working or developed <laughs> version of a way to use a volatile organic compound sensor with an Arduino. Now, I didn't come up with this. I originally heard about this from some dudes who were using this to control, I think it was called a feral dog project. I want to say it was through Dorkbot, but it could have been something else. But basically what they did was they programmed these VOC sensors and hacked, you know, circuit bent them into toy dogs so that the toy dogs would go in like a brown field to the places with the highest concentrations of VOCs. It was pretty cool. But anyway, so what I've got here is an Arduino kit from Lady Ada's site. I'm not actually using her proto board other than just for this breadboard. So that's the only thing connected on here. So I've got the Arduino kit, a potentiometer from it, some wires, USB cable, and the only other thing we need is the TGS 2620, made by a company called Figaro USA, figurosensor.com. I'll include a link to it. Their website really, really sucks, and they don't even have online commerce, which is probably why you don't see people building with this more. And you can see how it responds in change in resistance to different concentrations of different gases. And they also sell some other sensors, like you know, one specifically for ammonia. This is a general sensor for volatile organic compounds. And what I've done to wire this is we're just using, for power, we're just using the 5 volt line, running it to the two sensors on there from the data sheet that I'll link to for the 2620 sensor. And then we're putting a potentiometer in line to adjust the resistance. This is the 1K potentiometer that came with Lady Ada's kit. And then we're reading the output from the VSD sensor in series with the potentiometer on the analog input on our Arduino. So you plug this in. If you've worked with Arduinos before, you already know all this. A little green light will go on. Here is the Arduino developer environment. Got a little green light on. Excellent. So. Let's start listening on the serial part. You'll see these little numbers scrolling here. Um, 10 times a second, I think I have it reading. What this is doing is it's measuring the resistance between two different kinds of metal in there, I think. And, okay, now it looks like we're staying around 114 or so. Yeah, so I blew on it, it goes up to like 120 to 130. It's responding to the CO2 in my breath. And then we go back down. All that we can really do with this before we calibrate it is sense relative. Like if I breathe in this and then I have four beers and breathe in it again, there'll be more alcohol in my breath. So the relative change should be even higher, but what we really need to do to make this work effectively, and why we're calling this just a bare bones developer kit kind of thing, you need to calibrate this for a week, which basically, not calibrate it for a week, rather burn it in for, they say two days is okay, a week is optimal. So what I'm gonna do is plug this in and leave, basically just leave power going to this circuit with some resistance so I don't blow it out for about a week, and then we'll get much more accurate, stable readings out of here, but in the meantime, it's useful for 
you see we went up to 103 from being down in the 80s or 90s. So the other thing we need to do is also put a thermistor in line with this circuit. I'll post some information that I've got from Figaro on exactly like what to do that and how the response changes with different temperatures. But, you know, assuming you have half a brain and are smarter than me, you can probably figure this out really easily. A future project I'll have is a much more turnkey thing where we don't need our laptop sitting here to read the values and hopefully what I want to get to soon is building and maybe getting patent pending a VOC detector, just like you have a smoke detector or a carbon monoxide detector in your house. The same kind of thing, hopefully, it could make sense. So thanks for watching. Let me know any questions in the comments on Instructables. And build a way cooler version.